Today, I'll walk you through my room counterclockwise. As you come in, you'll see my desk with a laptop on the stand, along with a wireless keyboard and the mouse. Next to them, there is a desk organizer where I put my pens, memo pads, and highlighters. Then you'll see my cozy bed with two big soft pillows with a matching comforter. Underneath the bed, there are two spacious drawers. Next to the bed, I have a digital piano with some sheets on the music stand. Also, I put the dust cover on the keys. I have this unique bookshelf designed in the shape of a tree, where I place my books horizontally. If we pass the makeup table next to it, you'll see a built-in closet. So, how does your room look like? So this is what my bathroom looks like. As you enter, you will see two large mirrors above the sink. The left one is actually a wall-mounted cabinet where I keep extra towels and some bathroom supplies. Below the cabinet, I have a toilet with a toilet paper holder on the right. Next to the sink, you'll find a soap dispenser where you can pump to get liquid soap. There is a towel rack hanging on the wall opposite the sink, and there is a shower stall with glass doors and a detachable shower head. And in the shower, I have a shampoo, conditioner, along with a body wash, all of which are in tubes. I store them on a shower shelf in the corner. I'd like to show you my favorite part of my house: kitchen. The first thing you will see is a well-organized countertop. We've got a rice cooker, an air fryer, and a microwave standing in a row. On the hanger, you will find some essential kitchen supplies like a ladle, a sieve, and a turner. On the stove top. There are some frying pans and pots, which my mom told me to put in the cabinet. In a spice rack, we've got some seasonings and spices like salt, pepper, herbs, and stuff. Next to the sink, we have two dish drying racks since we don't use a dishwasher. We have a door to the pantry where the shelves are lined with cans, jars, and some dry goods. Next to it, we have two big ass refrigerators. We stock them with fresh produce, dairy products, and condiments like mayonnaise and salad dressings. So the first thing you will see is a comfy leather couch. It's large enough for the whole family to relax on. Across from the couch, we've got a flat screen TV mounted on the wall. Under the TV, there's a chest of drawers where we dump all the miscellaneous items. We've got these blackout curtains on windows to block the unwanted sunlight. Near the window, there are two leafy house plants. We've got a coffee table right in the middle of the room, and there is a standing lamp nearby that gives off a chill, cozy vibe. In one corner, we place the cordless vacuum cleaner, and finally, our family photos are displayed on the wall in wooden frames. First things first. After I get in the car, I buckle my seatbelt. And then I press the ignition button to start the car. I check the gas mileage on the dashboard to make sure I have enough gas. I adjust the rear view mirror and side mirrors to have clear views all around. If it rains, I turn on the wipers to clean the windshield. Or on a hot day, I adjust the climate control so that cool air comes out from the vents. I grab the steering wheel and put my other hand on the shifter. I'm a safe driver. So I stop at all signals and never go over the speed limit. When I want to change the lane, I flip on the turn signal. Also, I try to avoid honking the horn as much as possible. So here's how I do my laundry. First, I grab the hamper full of dirty clothes, and then I sort them out by color, and then also separate delicate items to put into laundry nets. Next, I load the washing machine with the clothes. I pour in some detergent and add fabric softener too. After the wash cycle, I move the damp clothes to the dryer. I always throw in a couple of dryer sheets for the fresh smell. After the dryer, I hang them on the drying rack. Once everything is dry, it's ironing and folding time. Finally, I remove lint from my sweaters, and it's done. As you walk down the street, the first thing you will notice is the street lights and the street trees. On the sidewalks, you will see utility poles with flyers on them. These days, all kinds of vehicles like cars, bikes, and electric scooters are everywhere. Also, you will see road signs, shop signs, and huge billboards all over. We do have crosswalks, but I often find people just jaywalking. 
I hope they at least look both ways before crossing the street. You will often find street food carts or tents selling everything from tteokbokki to hot dog. You can also see tall, shiny skyscrapers where the biggest corporations are usually located. You can easily spot some construction sites with big excavators working. Finally, there are some high-end boutiques and shops lined up on the sidewalks. First off, I cleanse my face with a gentle face wash. And as you know, a good makeup look needs a good skincare base. So I start by applying a toner and hydrating serum for an extra moisture boost. Then I apply sunscreen to look glowy and protected. Then it's a primer time. This makes my makeup last longer. Foundation comes next, which I blend in evenly all over my face. After that, I put my concealer under my eyes and on any blemishes to cover things up. I move on to my eyes, filling in eyebrows, applying eyeshadow, and lining with an eyeliner. I follow that up with curling my eyelashes with a curler and applying mascara. Finally, I finish off my look by applying lipstick and using setting spray. I go through the parking lot and get a shopping cart. First, I head over to the produce section to buy some fruits and vegetables. I can either get loose produce like cucumbers or bagged ones like potatoes. Next, I walk down the aisle to the dairy section. The items like milk products and eggs are refrigerated. At the butcher counter, I can order fresh cuts of meat. At the checkout counter, there are always some snacks waiting for me for a last-minute purchase, but I don't fall for it. The checkout lady scans all the items, and I put them in my bag. I always bring my membership card so that I can get a few discounts. After that, I load the groceries in the car and unload them once I get home. I walk down the stairs and scan my card on the machine to my right. There is a green arrow on it telling me where to walk in. On the platform, I usually stand by the section 4-2. It's marked on the floor inside that black triangle on that bumpy thingy. Above the safety screen door, there is a sign indicating the direction the train is going. There is a digital sign hanging on the ceiling as well. It tells us how many stops away the next train is. After getting on the train, I find a seat on one of the long middle benches. At both ends of the car, there are reserved seats for people who are pregnant or have mobility issues. On the subway station pole, I can see the metro logo at the top, station name in many languages, and accent number. Before heading out, I check the bus schedule on the map app. I tap my card at the scanner when I get on the bus, and the scanner makes a short beep to confirm. Then I find an empty seat or a good spot to stand. Next to the seat, I often find hammers to break windows in case of emergency. If I have to stand, I make sure to hold on to the handles or handrails. If I want to know where I'm at, I check the LED destination display board at the front of the bus, or the automated voice announces the next stop, which is super handy. If I'm close to my stop, I press the stop bell to let the driver know. I start off my workout with a warm-up on the treadmill and stationary bike. Next, I do 3 sets of 20 reps of push-ups. And then I work my arms with pull-ups until my arms feel sore. After that, I switch to working my abs with sit-ups. And then I work my leg muscles with some lunges. Next, I pick up dumbbells to do bicep curls. And then my trainer hands me a kettlebell for squats. Sometimes people ask me, what do you bench, squat, and deadlift? But to be honest, I'm not really into those big three exercises yet. Also, alongside my workouts, I'm maintaining a balanced diet. Let's take a quick tour of the lecture hall, which is half the size of the auditorium. The professors stand at a podium on the stage. They use a spacious lecture board behind them to lecture. There is also a projection screen hanging on the wall, so the projector in the ceiling would come down for use. The room has a tiered setting. Each seat can be folded and has a small fold-away writing pad. It is too small that even my laptop wouldn't fit that desk, so if you're writing notes, you don't get a lot of space for that. Also, due to the size of the room, professors would use a microphone, so everyone can hear the lecture clearly, even from the back row. I make an appointment to see a doctor by calling the hospital. 
At the hospital, I check in at the front desk by giving my name and appointment time. If it's my first visit, they may ask me to fill out a form. After checking in, I wait in the waiting area until my name is called. On my turn, a nurse takes me to the doctor's room. Inside the room, the doctor asks me questions about my symptoms. They might check my blood pressure or listen to my heart with a stethoscope. After examination, the doctor tells me a treatment plan. If I need medicine, he writes a prescription for me. I go to the front desk to pay and then go to the pharmacy and get my pills. Our head has the forehead, temples, jaws, chin, and cheekbones. I envy people who have dimples and high nose bridges. Our eyes consist of the eyeballs, pupils, and irises. Moving downwards, the arm is divided into the wrist, forearm, elbow, and upper arm. On the hand, we have knuckles, palm, the back of the hand, and the fingers, including index, middle, ring, little finger, and thumb. Then we see the chest, and below that we have the belly with the belly button. The sides of our bodies are where love handles typically are. Below them, the hips and the butts connect to the thighs. Moving lower, we see the knees, the calves, and finally the ankles. Lastly, we reach the feet, which include the ball of the foot, the heels, toes, and the soles. I hate summer because it's so hot and humid. But there are several things I. I hate summer because it's so hot and humid. But there are several things I look forward to doing in the summer. I like to walk along the shore in my flip flops and relax under a big beach umbrella. To protect myself from getting sunburns, I make sure to wear sunglasses and sunscreen. But it's not just the sun I need to protect myself from; it's also the bugs. It's our family tradition to go camping before monsoon season begins. I always bring my mosquito net tent to keep those bugs away, and because I'm allergic to mosquito bites, I apply bug spray all over my body, and I never forget to pack bug zapper racket. But if these measures fail, I have the bug killers at the ready. As I enter, my mouth starts watering because all the foods look so scrumptious. First, I head over to the salad station where fresh vegetables are. I love sushi, but I can't help but notice the slight fishy smell coming off of it. I add hot chewy tteokbokki to my plate, along with a creamy carbonara pasta. For the main dish, I fill my plate with tender, juicy roast beef. Sweet and sour pork is always on my plate, although it can get a little soggy. For a drink, I like to have my soda with a tangy lemon in it. For dessert, I either have a piece of rich chocolate cake or fluffy pancakes. I also enjoy a scoop of sugary vanilla ice cream. Because I usually have too much food at buffet, I often have a food coma afterwards. When I want to borrow books, I head over to my local public library. I find the books I want and take them to the self-checkout machine. Sometimes the books I want to borrow are still out. Anyway, I scan my library card on the machine. Then I scan the barcodes on the back covers of the books. The machine shows the due date for each book on the screen. I can typically check out the books for two weeks from the day I borrow them, but I can always renew my books before the due date. When it's time to return the books, I simply go to the drop-off area outside the library. I drop the books into the drop box, which is like a big bin for book returns. I've been searching online for a new phone. I was looking for a good phone plan with a larger data allowance. I was also considering larger storage capacity, longer battery life, and better camera quality. I visited a local retail store and told the salesperson what I was looking for. He showed me a phone that best suited my needs and preferences. The phone specs were exactly what I wanted. Since my entire family uses KT as our network provider. I could get a discount for bundle services. Also, he said if I activate the phone, I would be under a two-year contract. Lastly, I signed up for phone insurance that covers damage, loss, or theft of the phone. I took a payment plan that divided the cost into equal monthly payments over two years. I've been dedicated to practicing English speaking every day since March, and today's the last day of the 100 Days Speaking Challenge.
I can't believe I've accomplished this, and I couldn't be more proud of myself. At first, I doubted myself because I thought I was gonna give up just like I've done before. Sure, I missed a few days along the way, but the important thing is, I never gave up, and I did this at my own pace. And just look at the progress I've made; it's incredible. And I'm also really grateful for everyone else who took this journey with me. Every single one of us deserves a round of applause and a pat on the back. I'm sure this hard work will pay off in the future because now I feel like I can do everything. <laughs>